Hey guys, in this video the lovely Mr B is going to be looking at turning points for your A level maths. Now there are lots of examples in this video, work through slowly and calmly taking you through all the steps that you need and which bits you need to show in your exams. If you want more practice on this to make sure you've got the skill properly solidified then over on my website there is a crazy massive course with loads and loads of questions in there just waiting for you. As finding a gradient and then using it to do things like find the equation of tangents or normals we can also use the gradient for other things so we want to find a turning point of the line y equals x squared minus 6x so if you imagine that we have a set of axes and we have a curve what we mean by the turning point is the pair of the curve at the bottom or at the top knowing which way around it is where we kind of start going back around on itself. So this is the turning point. Now there's something special about the turning point. At the turning point, the gradient is equal to zero. So we're going to take our line, y equals x squared minus 6x. And so we can differentiate it to find the gradient. So we'll bring down the 2 for 2x and 6x has become 6. If you're not familiar with differentiation, go back and watch the videos on differentiation and tangents and normals. But we differentiate the line. So the gradient is equal to 2x minus 6. But we know that at the turning point, the gradient is going to be equal to 0 because there's no steepness at that point. So we can say that 0 is equal to 2x minus 6. And now we have an equation we can solve. So we can add 6 to both sides. So 6 is equal to 2x. We can divide both sides by 2. So x is equal to 3. Well, what does this mean? So the turning point is a coordinate. And we found it in the coordinate with an x and y coordinate. We know that x is equal to 3. So all we need to do now is substitute to find y. And we substitute into our original line. So we've got y is equal to x squared minus 6x. So we want to find y, so y is equal to, we know x is 3, so that would be 3 squared minus 6 times 3. So we can do 3 squared, it's 9. We can do 6 times 3, it's 18. So 9, take away 18, leaves negative 9. So y is equal to negative 9. So now we know the turning point of this curve is at the coordinate 3, negative 9. All we've done is we've exploited the fact that the gradient is 0 at the turning point. So let's have a look at another example. We've got y is equal to negative x squared plus 8x. So we differentiate to find the gradient. Bring in the 2, so negative 2, 8x becomes 8. So we've got something for the gradient. The gradient is equal to negative 2x plus 8. But at the turning point, the gradient is equal to zero. So we can substitute. We can say, well, the gradient m is zero. So zero is equal to negative 2x plus 8. So we could add 2x to both sides. That would give us 2x is equal to 8. And then divide both sides by 2. x is equal to 4. So now for the turning point, we've got the x coordinate. We'd also like the y coordinate. So we can substitute into our original line. So we're looking for y. And we know that x is going to be 4. So we swap all the x's for 4s. So 4 4 squared is 16, so that'll be negative 16. Remember, bid mass, so do Paris first. Then 8 times 4 is going to give us 32. So negative 16 plus 32 means that y is going to be equal to negative 16. So find the turning point of the line. The turning point is at 4, negative 16. For the next example, we're going to take our line y equals x squared minus 4x minus 8, and we're going to differentiate it first. So bring down the 2, 4x becomes 4, negative 8 is going to go away. But what we're also going to do is we're going to find the second derivative. So d2y by dx squared. So if we do this, we're only going to end up with 2. And it's going to tell us something about the curve. And we'll come back to that in a moment because the question's asking for the turning point. So the turning point is when the gradient is equal to zero. So 2x minus 4, the gradient must equal zero. So then we can add 4 to both sides. We can divide by 2. And we've got the x coordinate of the turning point. Next, we want the y coordinate. So we know that y is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 8. So we can work that out. So 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And we're taking away 8. So 4, take away 8, take away another 8. 
altogether will give us negative 12. So now we've got an x and a y coordinate. The turning point of the line is at the point 2, negative 12. Now the extra thing we can get from this is what we call the minimum or maximum point. Now this is a minimum point. So what does that mean? Well, if you imagine, again, we've got a pair of axes and we've got a curve on this pair of axes, then in this case, right at the bottom, this is the minimum point. This is the lowest that the y-axis values can be. Now, you don't really have a maximum point because it's going to go infinitely upwards. Now, let's say we had a graph that was the same, but it was the other way around. Then we would have a maximum point, meaning that the y coordinates cannot get any higher than at that point, but there's no minimum point because, again, it's going to stretch down infinitely forever downwards. So how do we know that this is a minimum point? Well, it's all about the second derivative. At the minimum point, the second derivative, d2y by dx squared, is going to be more than zero. And the reason why it's more than zero, you think about kind of reading the graph from left to right. When you get to the minimum point, you've got a positive number, which means that after this, the rate of change of the gradient is two. So it's gonna go upwards. Because that's what the second derivative does. It gives you the rate of change. Whereas at the maximum point, if you had, say, negative 2, then it would be going downwards. So that would be when d2y by dx squared is less than 0. Now, what would happen if it was equal to 0? Well, then you wouldn't have a curve. You'd have a straight line. So this is how we can figure out the maximum or a minimum point. Quick way to remember it. It's kind of the opposite way you'd expect. You get a positive number for a minimum point, and you get a negative number for a maximum point. Because really what you're talking about is what's going to happen next. After the minimum point, if it's positive, it's going to go up. If it's going up, then it means that you're at the lowest point. So the opposite way around, if your second derivative is negative, that means that after the maximum point, it's going down. So you must be at the highest possible point if what's happening next is going downwards. For the next line, we have y equals 3x squared minus 6x minus 6. So we can differentiate to find the gradient. 2 times 3 is 6, reduce the power by 1. And then we can differentiate for a second time to find if it's a minimum or maximum. So this will give us 6. So straight away that's positive, so I know this is going to give me a minimum point. So now let's work with the gradient and see where the turning point is going to be. Because again, we know the turning point of the line is the point where when the gradient is equal to 0, because the line's neither going up, are going down, it's kind of flat at the turning point. So the gradient is going to be zero, and that's equal to 6x minus 6. So we can add 6 to both sides, we can divide by 6, so the x coordinate is going to be 1. For the y coordinate, we know that y is going to be equal to 3 lots of x squared minus 6 lots of x minus 6. And we can work that out. So 1 squared is 1 times 3. Negative 6 times 1 is going to be negative 6, and we're taking away 6. So 3, take away 6, take away another 6, all together will give us negative 9. So y is equal to negative 9. So now we can write out what the coordinate is. So the turning point of the line is the coordinate 1, negative 9, and it's a minimum point. It's kind of the bottom of the curve because the second differential is 6, which means that after this minimum point, the rate of change is positive 6. It's going to be getting bigger afterwards. Moving on to our last example like this, we've got y is equal to negative 2x squared minus 8x minus 2. So we differentiate once for the gradient. Negative 2 times 2 would be negative 4. Reduce the power. And then differentiate for a second time to get if it's a minimum or maximum point. So that's going to give us negative 4. So we know already this is going to be a maximum point because we've got a negative second differential. Now we're looking for the turning point, so the gradient is going to be equal to zero at the turning point. So we can say that negative 4x minus 8 should be equal to zero at this turning point. So now we can solve it. So we could add 4x to both sides, so negative 8 is equal to 4x. Divide both sides by 2, so x is equal to negative 2. We also want the y coordinate, and we know that y is going to be equal to negative 2 times x, which is negative 1, squared, minus 8 lots of x, which is negative 2, take away 2. So negative 2 squared is 4, and 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times 2 will be a positive 16, and then we're taking away 2. So y, and we'll call that out, is going to be negative 8 plus 16, take away 2, which is 6. So you know the turning point of the line is going to be at the coordinate 
negative two, six, and it's a maximum. Because after this point, we've got negative four for the second differential. That means the rate of change for the gradient is negative four. So it's going downwards after this point. Our next example is a cubic. Now with a cubic, take a pair of axes, you're gonna have something like this. This is the kind of pattern you get from a cubic. Now with this is two turning points. So what you need to do with this is you're going to have to try and find two answers. You can also for each side, if it's a maximum point or a minimum point. Now for these, you can see with the maximum point, you can see actually at the start of the curve actually goes higher. So this is called a local maximum. And with the minimum point, that's a local minimum because you can see all the way on the right hand side, it does drop further below there. So again, come back to our line, y equals x cubed minus x squared minus 4x minus 2, and we're going to differentiate. So we can bring down the 3 and reduce the power, bring down the 2 and reduce the power, and 4x will be 4. So we've got an expression for the gradient. Now again, the gradient is going to be equal to 0 at the turning point. So that means that 3x squared minus 2x minus 4 must equal zero at the turning points. And now what do you see? Well, we've got a quadratic equation. Now you have to solve the quadratic. So you might be able to do it via inspection or complete the square. You're always gonna be able to do it using the quadratic formula. Now in this case, you'd have to use the quadratic formula. And if you use the quadratic formula, you would get two answers. You get x is equal to 1.54 to two decimal places. That's what we've been asked to round to and x is equal to negative 0 0.87. So again, I'm not going to go through uh, factorising quadratics. Uh, you can watch the video for that, but you, again, you need to factorise this. Now, once it's factorised, you've got two answers for x, and now we want the y coordinates as well. So you just need to do two substitutions for y. So your first substitution, y is going to equal 1.54 cubed, take away 1.54 squared, take away four lots of 1.54, take away two. And if you do that, what you should get is negative 6.88. So I'm not going to bore you expanding all of this. This is something you should be able to do by now. For the second y coordinate, it's going to be negative 0 0.87 cubed, take away negative 0 0.87 squared, take away four lots of negative 0 0.87, take away two, and then that answer should give you 0 0.06. And so it's giving you the, um, the two sets of coordinates that we need. So the turning point is going to be at 1.54, negative 6.88, and negative 0 0.87, 0 0.06. The next thing is we need to know which one is a maximum point and which one is the minimum point. So for that, we're going to need the second derivative. So the second derivative, d2y by dx squared, two times three is six, reduce the power by one, and negative two x become negative two. Now, unlike with a quadratic, this is going to vary. So we kind of don't get our answer straight away. And obviously we need a local minimum and a local maximum. So we can't just get one answer here. Now what we're going to do is substitute in the x coordinates for each. So for our first coordinate, we would do six lots of 1.54 take away two. And if you do that, you're going to get a positive answer. You can work out the exact answer if you need to, but I can see it's going to be positive. And then for the second one, we're going to do six lots of negative 0 0.87 and take away two. And that one is going to give us a negative answer. And again, you can work out the exact, the exact um, answer for this, but I can see, you know, six times something that's close to one will give us, you know, negative five point something perhaps, take away two, it, it's going to be negative. There's no way that can be a positive number. So that tells us which one is a minimum and maximum point. So if it's positive, then it'll be a minimum point. And if it's negative, it'll be a maximum point. So we've got the local minimum and the local maximum. So for the next question, we have y equals x cubed plus 7x squared plus 6x plus 6. So we want to differentiate first to find something for the gradient. Bring the 3 down. 7 times 2 is 14. Reducing the powers each time. So then once we differentiated, we want to find the second differential. D2y by dx squared. So 3 times 2 is 6. Reduce the power. 14. So we've done all of our differentiation. So now we need to start using it. So again, we know at the turning points, the gradient is equal to zero. So we can write an expression we can solve. And that is that the 3x squared 
plus 14x plus 6, which is an expression for the gradient that must equal zero. And so then we can use the quadratic formula and that'll give us two answers. It'll give us that x is equal to negative 0 0.48 and it's equal to negative 4.19. So now we have the x coordinates, we want to find the y coordinates. So we know that y is equal to x cubed. And so we need to do the substitution for both versions of x. Then we're adding on 7x squared. And again, do that for both versions. Then we're adding 6x, and then we are adding the 6. So if you work these out, we get your y coordinates, and that's going to be 4.62 and 30.19. So now we can write down the coordinates of our two turning points. We have negative 0 0.48, with the y coordinate we've got from substituting it, which is 4.62. Then we've got the second x coordinate, negative 4.19, and the y coordinate we've got from substituting that, which is 30.19. So now we want to know if these are minimum or maximum points. So to substitute them into the second derivative. So that's going to be 6 lots of x plus 14. And we do that substitution for both versions of that. So for the negative, 0 0.48 and we do it for the negative 4.19. Now again when we work these out actually the first one is going to be around about a negative 3 plus 14 so this one's going to be a positive number. Hey, I'm not bothering to work out the exact value because I can just figure it out from looking at it. For the second one 6 times negative 4 being negative 24 so you know add 14 it's still going to be negative. So the positive one is going to be the minimum point and the negative one is going to be the maximum point. Remember, these are local minimum and maximum because there are you know, higher and lower values of y on the left and right sides of this. So we're just talking about the minimum and maximum for the kind of turning points. So let's practice with a few more examples. So we have y is equal to 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 4. So we're going to prepare by differentiating twice. Firstly, to find the gradient, so 2 times 3 is 6, reduce the power by 1. 3 times 2 is 6, reduce the power by 1, and we have the negative 2. Then you can differentiate for the second time, and this will help us find it's a minimum or maximum point. So 6 times 2 is 12, reduce the power, and then we've got the plus 6. So we do our differentiation first, and now we have to do our substitutions. So the first substitution is because we're looking for the turning points, so the gradient is going to be equal to zero. That means that 6x squared plus 6x minus 2 must equal zero. So we need to factorize it. For these questions, it's a decimal answer, so you'll need to use a quadratic formula. But you might get one sometimes where uh, you can factorize through other methods and get whole number answers. And if you use a quadratic formula, you should find that x is equal to 0 0.26 and it's equal to negative 1.26. So now we have the x coordinates of our turning points. Next step is to find the y coordinates. We know that y is equal to two lots of x cubed plus three lots of x squared minus two lots of x plus four. We do that substitution for the first alternative for x, 0 0.26, and we also do it for the second alternative which is negative 1.26. So you put all that into your calculator and you get your two answers for the y coordinates. That's going to be 3.72 and 7.28. So now we have the turning points of the line. Just make sure you put the right coordinates with each other. So the 0 0.26, the x coordinate, has to go with 3.72. Try not to get it mixed up with the 7.28 which came from the negative 1.26. Now that might be enough, but sometimes we might be asked if it's a minimum or a maximum point. And so for that, we substitute into the second derivative. So it's 12x plus six, so that'd be 12, 0 0.26 plus six for the first coordinate and 12 lots of negative 1.26 plus six for the second coordinate. Now you can work out the answer, it's not really clear it's going to be positive or net negative. So 12 times 0 0.26 and then plus 6, that's going to give 9.12, that's a positive answer. 12 multiplied by negative 1.26 and then plus 6, that's going to give a negative 
9.12. So that's a negative answer. Now remember with this, it's from the opposite way around where that. So a positive answer means the curve's going to start going upwards, which means you've got a minimum point. So you have a negative answer, that means the curve's going to start going downwards, so you must be at the maximum point. Remember, these are local minimum and local maximum. So there are parts of the graph that are higher or lower, so we're just talking about the kind of squiggly bit in the middle with the turning points. Our next example is a negative cubic. It's y equals negative x cubed plus x squared plus 2x, plus 5. So we differentiate twice to get all the information we need for the rest of the question. So 3 times negative 1 will give us negative 3, and reduce the power by 1. 2 times 1 will give us 2, reduce the power. x terms become a number, and number terms go away. Same thing with the second derivative. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, reduce the power. 2x becomes 2, and the 2 disappears. Now again, we're finding the turning point, and we know that the turning point is when the gradient is equal to zero. So we can take the gradient, negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 2, and we can say this needs to equal zero at the turning point. And again, we get a quadratic. We can use a quadratic formula. Substitute in negative 3, 2, and 2, and we're going to get a couple of values for x. We're going to get negative 0.55, and we're going to get 1.22. Now that we know x, we need to find y. So y is equal to negative x cubed plus x squared plus 2x plus 5. We do the same thing for the other alternative for the x-coordinate, which is 1.22. And our two answers for y should be 4.37 and 7.11. And again, all these are two, two decimal places. So now we can write the coordinates of the turning points. x-coordinate negative 0 0.55 with the y-coordinate 4.37. We have the x-coordinate 1.22 with the y-coordinate 7.11. The last thing is determining if these are the maximum or minimum points. So we substitute into the second derivative, negative 6x plus 2. And again, this is something we need to do for both alternatives for x. One's going to give a positive answer and one's going to give a negative answer. So for the top one, we've got a negative number multiplied by a negative number. That'll be positive. Plus 2, it's still going to be positive. So the other one must be negative. You might just want to check that. You might want to do negative 6 times 1.22. That's going to give you negative 7.32. And then even adding 2 to that, it's still going to be negative at negative 5.32. But again, we don't care about the values at this point, just if they're positive or negative. For the positive value, that means the curve is going to start going upwards. If it's going to start going up, it must be at its lowest point. It must be the minimum value. It means the other one is the maximum value. Because then if the line's going to start going negative, then it's going to start going downwards. So we almost we must be at the top of the curve for that to happen. Remember, these are the local minimum and maximum. There are higher and lower points. These are just the highest and lowest points where the kind of terms of the curves are. Our last turning point example is y equals negative 7x cubed plus x squared plus 6x plus 1. And again, we're going to lay the groundwork here and we are going to differentiate twice. This gives us all the information we need for the rest of the question. So 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. Reduce the power by 1. Bring down the 2 for the x squared. 6x becomes 6. The 1 goes away. Then we're going to do 2 times negative 21 is negative 42. Reduce the power. 2x, we keep the 2, and the 6 is going to go. Again, we know this is a turning point question, so this is all about the gradient being equal to 0. That means that negative 21x squared plus 2x plus 6 must equal 0 at the turning point, and so we can factorise it using the quadratic formula to get the coordinates for x. So you're going to get x is equal to negative 0 0.49, and you're going to get that x is equal to 0 0.58. Now we've discovered the x coordinates, we need to find the y coordinates. So we know that y is equal to negative 7x cubed plus x squared plus 6x plus 1. So we do that for negative 0 0.49, and we're also going to do that for the 0 0.58. Put those into your calculator, you get two answers for y, you'll get negative 0 0.88, and you'll get 3.45. So now we know the two coordinates of the turning point, negative 0 0.49, negative 0 0.88, and we've got 0 0.58 and 3.45.
So now we have our coordinates, we need to work out if these are the minimum or maximum points. And for that, we need to have a look at the second derivative. So the second derivative is negative 42x plus 2. And we substitute that in for negative 0 0.49 and for the 0 0.58. Now we're not interested in the values, just the positive or negative. The top one is going to give us a positive answer because we've got a negative multiplied by a negative, which is positive, and we're adding two, which means the other one must be the negative answer. The positive answer gives us the minimum point, because a positive number is telling us it's about to start going up this graph, and the negative answer gives us the maximum point. Of course, these are local maxima and minima. There are other parts on the graph that are higher or lower. These are just the kind of the highest or lowest turning point. For our next set of questions, I want to know if a line is increasing or decreasing. So we need to know what these terms mean. So if we take a pair of axes and we think about what a cube it's going to look like, so maybe something like this, what does increasing or decreasing mean? So going from left to right, start off increasing. So the graph is going upwards. And we're kind of talking in terms of the y coordinates here. The y coordinates are going up. Then we get to the turning point and the graph starts decreasing. Let's write an i for an increase and a d for a decrease. Then we get to the second turning point and then the graph starts increasing again. So what we want to know in these questions is, for example, this one, when x is equal to three, which part of the graph are we on? Are we on an increasing part? or a decreasing part. Now, we need to think about what happens when we substitute in x equals 3. Now, the curve we're working with is y equals 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 3x plus 6. And as usual, the groundwork for this is going to be differentiating twice. So 2 times 3 is 6, reduce the power by 1. 2 times 7 is 14, reduce the power by 1. Then we've got the negative 3 and the 6 goes away. Second derivative, 2 times 6 is 12, produce the power by 1. Then we keep the 14 on the x, and the negative 3 goes away. So we've differentiated twice. Now we need to think about which one do we substitute x equals 3 into. So what does the substitution tell us for each one of these? So firstly, for the line, the y equals, when we substitute x equals 3 in, we get the value of y. So we get the position. So substituting into the curve will give us the position of the y coordinate when the x-coordinate is 3. So that's not helpful for this question. Now, when we substitute into dy by dx, and we're finding the gradient, then what we're looking at there is, we're looking at how steep the line is. And what you'll find is, if you substitute x equals 3 into this, and you work out what the gradient is, if the gradient is a positive gradient, then that means that you must be on an increasing section. If the gradient is negative, then you must be on a decreasing section. So let's work this out. So 3 squared is 9, and 9 times 6 is 54. 14 times 3 is 42. We're taking away 3. So 54, take away 42, take away 3, altogether is 9. So what we're saying is that when x is equal to 3, the gradient is 9. So the graph is increasing. So great, we've got our answer. We know it's increasing. So what about the second derivative? Well, the second derivative is a rate of change of the gradient. So it's going to tell you what's happening to the gradient next. So let's substitute into that and see what we get. So 12 lots of 3 take away 14. So 12 lots of 3 is going to be 36. And 36 take away 14 is going to be 22. So what this is telling us is that actually at this point when x is equal to 3, the gradient is going to keep kind of getting steeper and steeper in the positive direction. So not only can we say this is increasing, but we're most likely going to be on the increasing part that's kind of going off on the right hand side of the page, where it's kind of going to keep increasing more and more and more as time goes on. Whereas the first increasing section, it might be that the gradient would actually be going downwards at this point, or the rate of change would be going down. So for example, you could have a positive gradient, so the line's increasing, but you could have a negative second derivative, which would mean that the rate of increase is slowing down, and eventually it's going to turn into a decreasing part. So essentially what these two numbers mean is you've got what's happening now. So it was take now to be what's happening when x is equal to 3 then it's positive, so it's increasing. The second derivative is what's happening next. So next, it's going to continue increasing because that's positive as well. Last thing to do, because I've not done it, I haven't written down a final answer. So I need to write down somewhere that this is increasing. So moving on to another example, we've got the curve y is equal to negative 3x cubed plus 7x squared minus x minus 2. I can see we're talking about lines here. So I know that differentiation is going to be helpful and give me some information. 
So three times negative one would be negative three, reduce the power. Two times seven would be 14, reduce the power. Negative one X becomes negative one, the negative two goes away. Same thing, second derivative. Two times negative three is negative six, reduce the power, keep 14, and the minus one is going to go away. So once we've seen what we're talking about line, we're going to be differentiating. Then look at what exactly it's asking for. Now it's asking for if we are increasing or decreasing. And it's asking for that when x is equal to 7. So we know that substituting in x equals 7 to various things will give us different bits of information. Substitute it into the line y equals, and we'll get the y coordinate. Substitute it into dy by dx, and we're going to get the gradient. So let's do that. So swap all the x's for a 7. And we can work this out. So 7 squared is 49. And multiply it by negative 3. will give us negative 149. We're going to add on 14 times 7, which is 98, and take away 1. So altogether, negative 149 plus 98, take away 1, is going to give us negative 52. So that's telling us at this point on the graph, the gradient is negative. That means we are looking at a decreasing function. So we've got our answer. So the basis of these questions is it's choosing which of the three equations you substitute into. So you have to select which one is relevant. Now, out of interest, let's look at what's going to happen next. So if we substitute it into dy by um, dx squared, we would have negative 6 lots of 7 plus 14. So negative 6 times 7 is negative 42, adding on 14. And so that's going to give us a negative number. That's going to be negative 28. So what this is telling us is, at the moment, the gradient's negative 52. So it's negative. But then what's going to happen next? Well, the rate of change is getting even more negative. So the gradient of, say, x equals 8 is going to be even more negative than negative 52. But with that inf extra information, and I won't confuse you, the key number here is the negative 52. That's what's telling us that this is a decreasing function. Now, the next question is asking for the point of inflection. So again, we've got some new terminology to understand. So again, I'm going to draw a pair of axes. I'm going to sketch a cubic line. And so we need to think about what the point of inflection is. Now, the point of inflection is going to be here. We'll draw the green dot. And what the point of inflection is, is a difference between the bit above the green line, green point, and the bit below the green point. So you're going to think about what's happening with those two points. Now, above our coordinate that I've labelled in green, what's happening is the rate of change of the gradient is negative. And below it, the rate of change is positive. Because what's happening is below that point, the gradient is negative because that's a decreasing part. But the second derivative is going to be positive, which means that while at the moment we've got a negative gradient, it's getting more and more positive, and eventually that's going to lead to a turning point. Above it, we've got the reverse, where it's a negative gradient, and we're getting kind of more negative above it. So we're not heading towards a turning point just yet at that point. So the point of inflection is kind of the bit in between. It's the bit where the kind of the first curve starts to turn into the second curve. And we can maybe show that using some highlighting. So we've got our first curve. So this is a quadratic. You know, you've kind of got maybe a, a negative quadratic here. And then we've got our second curve, and this would be like a, a negative quadratic. So again, it's the point in between the two curves. When does it stop being one curve and start being the other curve? Will it start being a maximum point and starting to become a minimum point? That's a point of inflection. Now, again, we're talking about lines, so differentiation is going to be needed. So we've got y equals x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 6. So we're going to differentiate twice to get the information we need. So 3 times 1 is 3, reduce the power. 2 times 1 is 2, reduce the power. Keep the negative 4 from the x, the negative fit's going to go away. Repeat the process. 2 times 3 is 6, reduce the power. Then we're going to keep the 2 and lose the negative 4. Now, for the point of inflection, what that means is the second derivative is going to be zero. And again, with the labeling I did here, above that point, above the point of inflection, the second derivative is going to be negative. Below the point of inflection, the second derivative is going to be positive because it's starting to turn, it's starting to go upwards. So we just say that 6x plus 2 should be equal to zero. You can take away two from both sides and we can divide both sides by six. That gives it x is equal to negative two sixths. A fraction we can simplify, x is going to be a negative 
third. Now we don't just want the x coordinate, we want the y coordinate as well. And we know that y is equal to x cubed plus x squared minus four lots of x minus six. And we put all of that into your calculator, you get negative 4.59 to two decimal places. And so we've been asked for two decimal places. So rather than writing our answer as a fraction of the x coordinate, negative a third is going to be a negative 0 0.34. So it's negative 0 0.3 recurring, really. In fact, three recurring means I'm not going to round it up five or higher for a round up. So let's not write a four there. It's going to be um, 0.33. All we need to do now for a final step is just to write a, a, kind of, a kind of final answer here for the point of inflection. So we've got negative 0 0.33 and we've got negative 4.59. And again, that's a point on a cubic that's in between the two curves, where one of the curves starts to turn in to the other curve. So let's look at a few examples. So again, we're talking about a line. So it's talking about a line, then we know that differentiating is gonna be useful. And it's not that complicated to differentiate things like this. So you don't lose anything if you differentiate too many times. Maybe you don't need the second derivative, but it's not a lot of effort to find it. So three times negative one is negative three, reduce the power. Two times five is 10, reduce the power. Keep the negative seven for negative seven X and lose a minus one. Repeat it, two times negative three is negative six, reduce the power and keep the 10. So we've differentiated twice. Now we're looking for the point of inflection. So first we're gonna try and find the X coordinate. So the point of inflection is when the rate of change of the gradient is equal to zero. That's the second derivative. So we've got an equation we can solve. We can add six X to both sides and we can divide both sides by six. X is gonna be equal to 10 sixths. And we want our answer two decimal places. So we might wanna work out what 10 sixths is. So 10 divided by six is gonna give us 1.6 recurring or 1.67 to two decimal places. So now we need to substitute to find what the y coordinate is. So y is gonna be equal to negative x cubed plus five lots of x squared minus seven lots of x minus one. And I'm just writing it as fractions so I'm getting an accurate answer. I'm not rounding and then doing some more calculations. I'll round right at the end for the y coordinate. And the answer you get is negative 3.41 to two decimal places. All that's left now is to write down our final answer. To two decimal places, the x-coordinate is 1.67 and the y-coordinate is negative 3.41. And again, that is the coordinate where on the cubic, one of the curves starts to turn into the other curve. It's basically the point in between the two curves. So for our final example, quick scan of the question, it's mentioned a line, so differentiating is gonna be helpful. Our line is eight x cubed, minus 8x squared plus x plus 2. And I know when talking about a line, differentiating is going to be helpful. 3 times 8 is going to give us 24, reduce the power by 1. 8 times 2 is 16, reduce the power by 1. And then with the 1x, we'll keep the 1 and we'll lose the plus 2. Do it another time. So 2 times 24 is going to give us 48, reduce the power, and we'll keep the 16. And so now we've got our second derivative, the rate of change of the gradient. And now looking at the question, we're looking for the point of inflection. That's when the rate of change of the gradient is zero. It's neither going up or not going down. It's kind of changing in between the two. So to find the X coordinate, 48X minus 16 must be equal to zero at the point of inflection. So we can add 16 to both sides, divide both sides by 48. 16 over 48, that's something we can simplify. So we can definitely divide it through by eight, which will give us two sixths and divide that again, it's gonna give us a third. As a decimal, because we want it to two decimal places, that'd be 0 0.33. Now again, we want the y coordinate, so y is equal to eight lots of x cubed. Take away eight lots of x squared plus x plus two. Again, I'm not substituting 0 0.33, I don't want any rounding errors. I'm gonna substitute in the fraction, get the full level of accuracy, and you should get 1.74 as your answer. So the point of inflection, is going to be at 0 0.33 for the x-coordinate and 1.74 for the y-coordinate. And that's our final answer. Again, it's the point on a cubic in between the two curves. Ouch. Mm, I'll be too